hi guys, I promised you guys a three-piece episode on one of my latest acquisitions, which is a 318-unit storage complex uh, plus the office building here, which actually has a couple units in it as well. Uh, what I want to go through in this three-video series is why I buy the type of investments that I buy, uh, how I structure these type of deals, what I'm looking for uh, when I put these type of investments together. And then on the third one, we'll dive into all the numbers. So I'll show you how I ran the numbers and what the returns are. And it's gonna be a lot of fun and exciting as we go through here. Uh, well, first things first, uh, being an investor in town for quite some time, uh, folks know that I buy uh, apartments and commercial buildings. And in fact, most of my other videos are apartment buildings. But today, as you can see, we're here at one of my uh, beautiful new storage complexes. And uh, the seller called me on this one and uh, they were unable to properly get it off the ground. They were having trouble uh, filling it. It was built out in 2019 and I think the very beginning of 2020 and then we purchased it and closed on it September 30th of 2020. So uh, a brand new building, it's been a fun facility to get off the ground. But the reason I bought this type of building is of course, cash flow. With 318 units, there's a ton of cash flow upside. So one of the first things I needed to do is find what the break-even point is. Uh, if you don't know what the break-even point is, that is how many units do you need rented until the facility pays for itself or stands on its own two feet? It's the very same with apartment buildings and especially if you're talking new construction or redevelopment apartment buildings. How many units do you need leased before there's a break-even point? Because everything is profit after that. So when I was analyzing this building, I used that break even point to see what the cash flow is. So why do I buy multi-unit buildings, whether it's storage facilities, apartment buildings, or even mobile home parks? Because I'm a cash flow investor, of course. I really enjoy how you can take a look at the numbers, see what the expenses are, and see what you can do with that income. Because an increase in income and a decrease in expenses moves up your NOI, or your net operating income. And multi-unit buildings like this, commercial buildings, their value is based on that net operating income. So that net operating income is simply gonna be all the revenue that the building creates minus all the expenses. So when you buy a facility like this, that's what you're tooling with to try to increase the value. You wanna look at the building and say, okay, how do I increase all the revenue, the income, and how do I decrease the expenses? Now, one thing to note is that net operating income number does not include any debt service. Uh, normally, I do uh, have debt in my deals, either seller debt or will uh, involve the seller. Uh, but this one, myself and my investment partners in this, we paid all cash for this facility with just some of the uncertainty out there in the market and the fact that this facility wasn't off the ground yet, we chose to come in with all cash and do this. But even when I bought it, it was at the break even point. And that was roughly at 25% occupancy. So because we had no debt service, even at that 25% occupancy number, because it was a brand new facility, we were at break even. So yes, that's right. That means 75% of the revenue is still available and puts us in profit land. Hey guys, if you're interested to see how I structured this, and then of course the numbers coming up, please click the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as these new videos come out. This is gonna be some information you don't wanna miss if you're like me and you love cash flow real estate. So until next time, click the like button, click subscribe, and we'll see you later.